A Hidden People contains mature language, content, and themes. Please listen with care. Writers Movement presents The Hidden People, starring Jordan Lopez, Stephen Gogol, Sean Gunther, Xander Hildenbrandt, Emily Kallenberg, Stephen Kallenberg, and Luna Madison. Season 2, Episode 13, The New Blood. Written by Stephen Kallenberg, directed by Chris and Megan Burnside. Also starring Jacob Anderson, Aaron Crane, Chrissy McKim Barker, Carly Reisenhoover Peterson, and Sammy as Murphy. Mac, Shaylee, are your bags packed? Yep. You have everything you need. Hi. Swimsuit, sunscreen, aloe vera. Yes, Mom. <laughs> Let them breathe, Niss. I'm so jealous. I just want to be sure it's all ready before registration. We need to have our shit dotted and crossed because we're doing this the normal way. We'll be fine. Yeah, the ship doesn't leave for like an hour. <sighs> yes, but you're already late for check-in. Okay, here are your Nissa took care of everything packets. You've each got a passport, driver's license, and some additional identification papers. Now, when you check in, you'll have to sign some forms. So be sure to review the characters I've given you and the signatures that I forged on your IDs. You're already giving us homework. Relax. We're tracking Shaylee's new changeling assignment, not breaking into Azkaban. I think you mean Alcatraz. Seriously? I prefer Shawshank, but nobody asked me. Man, going on a cruise and calling it work. You two get to do all the fun stuff. Fun, right. Because I'm really looking forward to shuffleboard by the pool. No one your age plays shuffleboard. But since we're doing this the traditional way... Like stepping sideways to check in. We need to be as inconspicuous as possible which means we need to at least pretend to have fun. Now when you check in, they'll give you a lanyard with your personal keycard. Your keycard is your lifeline. It's how you get to do any of the excursions, the special events, food, and the all the drinks drinks package. You're the best, Nissa. How are you going to step sideways with a bunch of luggage? We tricked one bag into holding all of our stuff. Are you ready, McKenna? Let's do this. Good luck, you two. Ooh, bring me back one of those drinks they serve in a pineapple. Remember your characters. Don't cause trouble. Bye. Well, there they go. And now we wait. I'm gonna head over to Sam's to deliver this soup I made for her. And to see how she's doing. If you need me, or if something happens. We have this. Focus on Sam. Okay, okay. See you later. <sighs> and then there were two... Actually... Oh, don't tell me you're leaving too. I'm having brunch with my mom. Sif Sif's daughter? You know that isn't her last name. She is Sif, so her last name can't be Sif's daughter. Yeah, your mom's the best. Can I come? I mean, I don't think I've ever fully convinced her that we've never hooked up, so it probably won't matter if you're my shadow today. Might as well play into the delusion. Sweet. Is this like a pancakes place or an Eggs Benedict place? You have never eaten Eggs Benedict in your entire life. Uh, I know you can't forget that I grew up rich. My parents have a butler who makes all kinds of fancy meals. You have never eaten Eggs Benedict in your entire life. Yeah, he always made me pancakes. This place doesn't have Mrs. Butterworth, so you'll have to settle for syrup that came from a tree, not a lab. Come on.
Uh, are you sure we can't just step sideways onto the boat? I hate long lines. You heard, Nissa. We have to do this the traditional way. We can't draw any attention to ourselves. Nissa will never know. You better look at your passport. You need to at least know your name and where you're from. <sighs> Fine. Uh, I am Charlotte Ray Sawyer. I'm from Kansas? I don't know anything about Kansas. Well, now ain't that a shame. The name's Adeline, Adeline Taylor. I come down this way from Georgia just to get away some. Are you serious? You're Irish. Why can you do a southern accent? Everybody can do a southern accent, darling. Here, you try. I don't do accents. And why's that, sugar? Because I'm not a fucking chameleon, sugar. You poor thing. All them superpowers and you can't do what Lord knows everybody south of Georgia can do in their sleep. Gee, ain't that mighty fine of you. You're just sweet as sugar, ain't ya? <laughs> it's okay, Mac. Kansas is in the Midwest, so they probably don't have an accent anyway. I don't know anyone from Kansas, so I have no idea. We just need to blend in so that we can make contact. You don't need a fake voice to do that. My version of blending in is to not speak. Don't be such a dry shite. You can do whatever you like. But Adeline has to stay in character. Ugh. Sam, are you in there? I made soup for you. The door's locked. Can you let me in? There you are. After several quiet weeks, our former detective and former host to an alien monster is still trying to return to some semblance of normalcy in an unnatural world. <laughs> Good luck with that. Hey. Hi. I thought maybe my texts weren't getting through, so I decided to pop over and see how you're doing. Oh. Well, I appreciate it. I'm fine. Just recovering and getting back into things. That's great. Slow and steady. We'll get there. Um, I made you some soup. I don't know what your system can handle food-wise, or how long it takes to recover, but my dad always swore by this stuff. <laughs> Thanks, but you didn't have to. It's been weeks now. You don't need to bring me food. Oh, I know, but I wanted to. I feel partly responsible. Don't. You're not responsible. You had nothing to do with... with what happened. I guess since you're here, you might as well come in. So, uh... What have I missed? Well, McKenna and Shaylee left to go on a cruise. A cruise? McKenna? Wow, things have changed a lot. The court has a new changeling that Shaylee's supposed to train. Nissa found out she works on a cruise ship, so Shaylee and McKenna are on their way to make contact. Nice. What have you been doing? Just trying to get into a normal routine. Keep busy. Looking for a job. Maybe I'll get my PI license, despite how it ended. I thought I was pretty good at my job. Well, you can come back to us any time. I miss you. And we could really use you. Use me doing what? Staying ahead of the hidden people, for one thing. Thomas, that isn't a job. You do know that. You're not part of some super team. This isn't a comic book movie. I know, but the hidden people- Are McKenna's thing, not yours. But I want to help her. And how exactly do you help? What is your role in the Avengers? Well, I... I help with lots of things. Baking. Not just baking. I... also cook. <sighs> I made you this soup. Thomas, you have no special evil fighting skills. None of us do. Sure, I could track down a car thief or maybe even a murderer, but we can't fight monsters. We are normal people. We need normal lives with normal jobs. Is McKenna's magic going to pay your bills? 
My parents had good life insurance. I'm not worried about money right now. Well, that's nice. But I need to live in the real world, and that requires a steady income. I totally understand. How are you feeling? I'm starting to get used to the phantom finger syndrome. Typing sucks, of course. The weirdest part is how much lighter my hand feels. I'm sorry. I wish we could have figured out how to stop Cygnus sooner. I don't blame any of you. But it's all proof that we don't belong in that world and we shouldn't try to. How can I support you through this? It's okay, Thomas. You don't have to be my shrink. I'm okay. But I want to be there for you. Can I help with anything around the house? Uh, the dishes or anything? Nope, I'm good. Shoot, I never took care of the monster head in the basement. Uh, let me clean that up. J just a sec. No, Thomas, don't go down there. It'll only take a minute. Thomas. Sam? What is all this? Oh, yes, Samantha. Do explain the state of your basement. Instead of a rotting monster head, the room is filled to the brim with weapons. Rifles, pistols, knives, explosives. On one table sit buckets of bullets and metal shrapnel. On the other rests a hacksaw and a recently sawed-off shotgun. Oh, I'm sorry, Samantha. Thomas asked you a question. You were saying... <laughs> it's nothing. Nothing? Sam, this is... Is this what you've been doing? Why you haven't been over? I've been busy. You have an armory in your basement. Is that an anvil in the corner? I told you I can't sleep. So you pound metal into weapons? To relieve stress. I bought the rest. Is all of this legal? Of course it's legal. It's just... frowned upon. This is how you're dealing with your trauma. I'm fine, Thomas. I guess everyone has their own coping mechanism. I wish you'd reach out to me. I could help you. <sighs> you couldn't possibly help me. You don't know what it was like. Then tell me. Help me understand. I'm here for you. I'm here so that you can talk and I can listen. I'm not a talker, Thomas. I think and then I act. But you need someone to confide in. You shouldn't bottle it I all up. I said I'm fine, Thomas. You said yourself everyone has their own coping mechanism. This is mine. Let me be fine. But you're not. Why not? Why can't I be fine? Because I'm not fine. And it didn't even happen to me. I saw you suffer. I watched your body deteriorating. I got you into all of this. So I need Don't. To do that. Don't put it all on you. You don't have the right to put it all on you. This is my burden, mine, and I'm handling it. You don't get to remove my agency from my own coping by telling me how to do it. I watched you bite off your own finger. Your ring finger. And? Well, that's kind of significant, don't you think? What? Were you going to propose? Did you think we were on that level, Thomas? You once said you loved me. That doesn't mean we're getting married. There is no happy ending, no riding off into the sunset. At the end of the day, there's just a lot of fucking monsters. I know we belong together. I know you believe it too. We've been through too much. We're supposed to help each other heal. I'm healing just fine on my own. I know. You're so much stronger than I am. I think you need to leave. Oh, come on, Sam. Don't do this. Don't push me away. Go home, Thomas. Sam. Go home. If that's what you really want, I'm sorry. Take care, Sam.
Hi, Mom. Nissa! You smell lovely, dear. What is that? Peppermint? Or perhaps the sweet scent of the destruction of the patriarchy? I can never distinguish them. No, you're confusing it with the smell of defrauding a Fortune 500 cruise line. My mistake. <laughs> Good girl. Alfie! I didn't know you were joining us this beautiful morning. Hi, Ms. Bjorn's daughter. <clears throat> oh, you give the best hugs. Nissa, how did you not become a hugger with a mom like this? My cold stoicism and righteous anger skipped a generation. Nonsense. I am quite often righteously angry. Sit, sit. I was waiting until you arrived to order. Alfie, it feels like ages since we last saw each other. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Nissa's birthday? No, you saw her at New Year's Eve. I know you didn't forget that. I don't know why you still have that tone about it. You chased a parade float half a mile and ended up on television. They were mistreating that poor dog. It was a paper mache dog pinata. Well, I didn't exactly know that at the time, did I? If I don't stand up for defenseless animals, who will? We will. Other than the embarrassment of constantly hearing people talk about it for a week, I was actually really proud of you. Aww. You could never be as proud as I am of you, store manager, at your age. How's the music business? Mm, music retail business is kind of slow. Fewer and fewer people care about art. Everyone wants to just make a bunch of money, yet they expect artists to give them entertainment for free. Capitalism is a disease. And enlightened empowerment is the cure. You two should do a podcast. I know I'd subscribe on Patreon. Oh, a podcast is like radio on demand. You can pick any- I know what a podcast is, darling. I listened to that NPR one about the clockmaker. Such a sad story about the way our society has othered and abandoned the working class. Please don't talk about that one. Alfie cried for an entire day after he listened to it. <laughs> poor, poor John. <laughs> that got me right in the feels. Well, if the store isn't occupying your time, what is? Barely heard from you at all these past months. Really, since the funeral, I think. Yeah, things got... hectic around then. Poor McKenna. I wish she'd gotten the help she needed before all that happened. We have such a problematic stigma surrounding mental illness, you know. Oh, McKenna's not mentally ill. She's fine. And just this morning... She, she had breakfast in the prison cafeteria because McKenna is in prison. Oh, right. Yeah, she cray. That is not a very inclusive way to discuss mental illness, Alfie. Y you're right. I I'm sorry. It isn't Fack's fault. Fack? That's Alfie's nickname for McKenna. Oh, yeah. It stands for, uh... Falsely accused convicted killer. It should stand for Alfie should shut up. Well, that would be Asu, not Fack. You think McKenna was falsely accused? Uh, this is right. I plead the Asu. Don't worry about him. You know how I tell you half our friendship is me tuning him out. Hey! It's okay, Alfie. I know how my girl can have a hard shell. It's her armor of agency and personhood. Deep down, she knows how lucky she is to have a friend as special as you are. Oh, he's special, all right. Well, you know I will be happy to talk over anything with either of you if you ever need an ear. I know that losing your friend must have been very hard on you. But if we're going to have a serious conversation, we should do it over chocolate chip pancakes. Can you just be my mom, please? You're already part of the family, Alfie. I'm going to lose my appetite if the two of you don't quit it. on this cruise ship have proven more trying for McKenna than facing both the Magister and Cygnus. But she may have finally found a foe she cannot best. So for this special dinner night, we have assigned seats. Assigned seats? Aye. 
Can't we just get our food to go or something? Didn't you read the file Nissa gave you? It was 20 pages of size 10 font. I skimmed it. And by skimmed, I mean never looked at it. Tonight is a five-course meal. This is the culinary highlight of the cruise. Sure, I get that, but can we get that highlight for delivery instead? Nissa changed the seat and assignment so Riley is our waitress. This is our big chance to make contact. All right, all right. Focus on the job. Here we are. Table nine. Remember your character. Hey there. Are you folks at our table? I think so. Is that okay? We can leave. Oh, don't be silly. We love meeting new people. Herb, would you scoot over, hon? Sure thing. Yeah, there was another couple at this table about five minutes ago, but the server checked their reservation. It said table 18, not table 9. Can't sit at table 9 if you're supposed to be at table 18, and this is table 9. Oh, great. This won't be awkward at all. Be good. You might even have fun. Hi, I'm Riley. I'll be serving you tonight. You must be Adeline and Charlotte? Nice to meet you, Riley. I'm Adeline, and this is Charlotte. Have you met Herb and Barb yet? Herb here, and this is my beloved wife of many years, Barb. Oh, hi there. Adeline and Charlotte, was it? Yep, I am Charlotte. Charlotte is me. It's a pleasure meeting all of you. Did you get to take a look at our drink selection? Oh, sure. We'll let them go first. Oh, uh, shit, I didn't look at it. Uh, how about a dragon fruit royale? That one is delicious. It's like a dragon's pineapple express. If dragons were real. Good choice. Blackberry malt for me, please. And one other pairing of fruit and alcohol. Love your accent, by the way. (sighs) If you only knew. Oh, those drinks sound so exciting. But I think I'll stick with a diet pop. 2% milk for me. Barb, living large. All right, I'll be back in a sec with those. So, where are you two from? I'm from... Shit, I forgot. Georgia for me. Charlotte's from Kansas. Right, Charlotte? Uh, yep. Just call me Dorothy. Except don't, because I barely answer to Charlotte. We're from a little town up north near Aitken, Minnesota. We're just here for a small romantic getaway. Barb's being modest. This is our honeymoon. I thought you said you'd been married for many years. That's right. Technically, we did have a log cabin up near Rochester for a few days. I remember because I went ice fishing for our dinner. But that didn't really count. What? Oh yeah, cold as heck out there, wasn't it, Herb? You betcha. Nothing like this with the sun and the beaches. Anyway, we finally threw caution to the wind and took a real honeymoon. You know what? Good for you. You throw caution to that wind. We're here for the same thing. What? I'm sorry? This is our big romantic getaway. Oh, dear. So, you two are... Together? You're those, uh... People? Why, yes, we are people. Golly. Well, that, uh, that's a choice. Is it warm in here, Herb? Muck, what are you doing? I'm actually having a great time. Well, I, I guess, you know, everybody's different in their own way. And that's okay. You betcha. You know, I slept on the other side of the bed once, and we're still here happily married, aren't we, Barb? That's innuendo for something. That's right, Herb. We aren't ones to judge. So, dragon fruit. I- I've never heard of that. What? What is it? It's an exotic fruit. Very common in cruises. They mostly just put it in alcohol. In lesbian alcohol. <laughs> Gets you super wasted. Oh, my... We need to focus on Riley. Think about how we can gain her trust. Be subtle, be authentic and believable. Don't give me rules unless you want them broken. We don't want to scare her away. All right, here are your drinks. Do you need more time to pick your main course, or are you ready? We'll let them go first this time. Can I have the uh, Tuscan chicken, please? I'm going to do the blue-billed duck option, I think. I'll have the Mediterranean dish, please. And for you, Charlotte. If you've ever felt like an outsider in your own life, meet us on the deck at 11. We have all the answers. Um, okay. Now, I was going to do the lobster, but you know what? I'm going to live it up like Barb and get the Tuscan chicken. Can I have another one of these dragon drinks, please? You are hitting those drinks a little heavy, don't you think? 
Shouldn't you finish the first one? Oh no, that one's for you. Drink up, Barb. Trust me, Riley. We have all the answers. I'm doing my best confused Mark Wahlberg face right now. Does he have another face? Basically what I was getting at. Mac, quit being weird. There's zero chance she'll talk to us now. Yeah, I think I'll just go get this order in. You four have fun. We're going to lose her. Uh, hang on a second. Herb, Barb, didn't you need to go back to your room for something? I'm not sure. Oh yeah, you definitely did. Something you can only do in your room, privately. Maybe take our drinks with you, spice things up. Oh my god. Herb, remember that uh, thing we need to get back in our room? Oh. Oh, right. That thing. Ah, uh, please excuse Barb and me. We'll be right back. Well, maybe not right back. What just happened? We need to talk without them overhearing. Did you just... Did you just Jedi mind trick them? Yup. Into having sex. Very classy, Mac. What? They seemed like they needed a little more excitement. Two percent milk? Pfft. But... What? How? You're different. I bet you've felt that way your whole life. Don't fit in with your family, you feel like you belong somewhere else. There's a piece missing in your life and people don't seem to get it. It's because there's a magical world and you are a changeling. You can do magic. Shaylee and I are here to train you. I'm what? A changeling. A magical construct made to replace the girl originally born as Riley Gallagher. I... I... I knew it. I freaking knew it. I thought something was wrong with me, then I thought something was wrong with everybody else, which was a way more appealing philosophy. But this, this makes so much sense. Oh my god, is this my red pill or blue pill moment? I totally pick red. See, this was way quicker. You're surprisingly receptive to this paradigm shift. Are you kidding? This is awesome! Can I just quit my job now and go be a superhero with you? Sure. Let's at least wait until the cruise is over. We can't draw unnecessary suspicion. Can I still meet you on the deck tonight for a secret meeting? Yeah, why not? And since you're still working here for now, maybe get us new drinks. Yes, boss. I'm the boss. She's just my assistant. Excuse me. Got it. Boss and assistant boss. I'll be right back with those drinks. Oh, and this accent is way better. So, that's why I don't fit in. I literally don't fit in. I'm like a human alien. More like a copy. You were created and then switched at birth with your fetch and given to the Fitch's parents as their child. It sucks, I know. We hope to someday change that. But in the meantime, we need to train you to survive, because your Fetch has been freed, and she will come to reclaim what she thinks has been taken from her. So I need to train to face my doodle bob. Can we have some montage music while I run upstairs and punch sides of beef? Oh, wait. Magic is real. I'm going to learn spells. Fireball! The magic of the hidden people is subtle. Charm person! Yeah, that sounds much closer. We don't want to attract attention. So while we're here, just go about your normal routine. We only have another day to go. Okay, well, I'm going to go finish some things and then rest. Big day tomorrow, what with the job quitting and magic learning. Remember, act normal for one more day. And then you'll train me. Okay, sweet. I'll see you tomorrow. This is so fun. It's like I finally got my Hogwarts letter. Magic is real, people! This... This is her normal, isn't it? Her energy is adorable. Can we just put her in our pocket? We can make a fit. 
Yeah, the challenge will be getting her adorableness ready for her fetch. We'll be fine. You keep saying that. It's not to reassure me. Detective Samantha Mulligan. If this is an emergency, please hang up and dial 911. Otherwise, leave a message. Hey Sam, it's Thomas. Just wanted to see if you're okay. I'm sure you probably don't want to talk, but I couldn't get our last conversation out of my mind, so I figured I would try. I'm sorry for what happened with Cygnus. I can't even imagine what that must have been like. You're the strongest person I know, so if anyone can come back from that, it's you. If you need anything, I'm here. And if you don't, that's also okay. Anyway, I hope to talk to you later. Oh, Thomas. Perhaps you should stop surrounding yourself with closed-off women who have a habit of endangering your life <laughs> before it's too late. Charlotte Ray, how was your first cruise? Was it everything that you dreamed of? Oh, stop it, whatever your name was. It was fine. Better than I expected, at least. This might be weird, but I think I'm going to miss Barb. And what about our newest recruit? Honestly, the hard part's over, right? We broke the ice. Now we'll have to see how she trains. Training is much harder. Only time will tell. Unfortunately, time is against us, as always. Well, here she comes. Riley, over here. Top of the morning to ya. Is she making fun of me? Cool it, Leprechaun. Shaylee's in charge of you, remember? Are we all set? Put in my resignation. I'm officially broke and homeless. Why do I have a good feeling about that? Because the pieces finally fit. Where are we going? Safe house. Which is her beach house. One of my beach houses. How generous of you, Ms. Winfrey. Are we taking a cab? Not exactly. There's a circle over here. You're in for a treat, Shaylee. After you. That's the last of it. Not sure what time people are coming back, but, uh... Hey, Thomas. Sam! Hi! I'm sorry, I didn't hear you come in. <laughs> Whoa, Murphy. <laughs> I know we were brain friends, but take it easy. Do you mind if we move into the living room before he knocks me down the stairs? <laughs> <laughs> sure. It looks like he missed you, too. It was an incredibly strange sensation being trapped inside a dog's body and having to compete for attention. <laughs> Even a dog as great as Murphy. It's okay. You don't have to talk about it. Sam, I'm so sorry for pushing you. I never meant to cross a line. I just want to be with you and be here for you. Take as much time as you need. But you were right. I thought I could bury this like I've buried so many things, but... This? This is something on a whole different scale. When Cygnus was in control, I couldn't breathe. It was like needing to come up for air, but the air never came. I screamed, but it was like screaming with your mouth closed. 
and I felt that sensation in Murphy's body and in mine. I felt helpless. I was helpless. I don't know if you've realized, but I don't do well with helpless. I like circumstances that I can control, and that makes everything with this magical world so hard for me. And this was just too much. I get it. I like having both hands on the wheel, too. I remember some of the things I did in Murphy's body. I remember you telling me about Ron. But now I also remember killing him. My body remembers everything that Cygnus did. We fought. For control? I couldn't ever win, but that isn't why we fight, is it? I suppose it isn't. I had no hope. And now that I'm out, that hope is still gone. I still feel helpless. I can't undo anything that I did. I killed my partner. I saw it happen. I felt it happen. I can still smell his blood, and I have to live with that the rest of my life. Oh, Sam. I'm sorry you have to carry that weight. If I could, I would carry it for you. I want the world to go back to the way it was before all this. But it won't. I don't know how we cope with what's out there. But I know we'll do it better together. I don't want to be apart from you again. You might not be okay now, but you will be. You were too strong, too courageous, and too stubborn to let anything keep you down. We're better together. Well, that's good. Because I kind of like you, too. <laughs> also, do you see this? Your dog's head is in my lap. I don't think I'm going anywhere right now. But I... I can't promise that forever. I feel like I don't belong in this weird new world. I thought the collection in your basement was preparation for this world. Not preparation or provocation. It's reaction. I need to be ready if something happens again. But that doesn't mean I'm seeking it out. I understand. It won't be easy, Thomas. I will do my best, and I won't be perfect. Sometimes I'll struggle. Don't give up on me. I never give up on the people I love. <laughs> Eat up, people. These muffins aren't going to eat themselves. Alfie, where were you this week? Ugh, mostly at work. My paycheck is actually important now that it's my only source of income. This is often how paychecks work. We did have a nice brunch with my mom the other day. Mrs. Sif's daughter. <laughs> you see what you've done. I regret nothing. <laughs> how is your mom? She's fine. Right now she's at a protest somewhere. Maybe Michigan? Sounds like her. I miss her. Unfortunately, you'll probably never see her again in person. Sam. I know, I know. I'm in prison. Uh, so how did the cruise go? Yeah, Thomas finally got me out of the house. I want to meet this new mystery recruit. She's at one of the safe houses. Also, can we talk about why I got an old warehouse and Riley gets a beach house? Ha ha. I thought it would be best to bring her in slowly. Yeah, probably smart knowing us. What are you talking about? I think we're pretty great. Anyway, uh, I want to make a little toast. Seriously, Thomas, it's just us. Yeah, who needs toast when you bake like a hundred muffins? I know, I know, but I just want to say that it's been quite the adventure for all of us. It's been really tough. We know that the road we're on is not easy, and we won't always know the way. But I wouldn't share it with anyone else. Like I told Sam earlier... We're better together. <laughs> Dayton Writers Movement presents The Hidden People. Executive Producers Chris Burnside and Megan Burnside. 
Producers Alexa Fett Fisher, Xander Hildebrandt, Emily Kallenberg, Stephen Kallenberg, and Jordan Lopez. Lead writer Chris Burnside. Script editor Alexa Fett Fisher. Sound design, score, and original music by Catherine Seaton. Sound engineer Colin Susich. Theme song by Catherine Seaton and Michael Yates. For more of the Hidden People, visit our website at hiddenpeoplepodcast.com. You betcha. It sure is magical tonight. I think I felt the earth move her. Oh, that might just be the rocking of the boat, or it might just be me. If the boat's a rocking, don't come a knocking. Herb, what you did to me tonight was magical. Is it better than Tucson in 98? Oh, Herb, it's better than having three diet pops in a row. Is it better than 2% milk? Herb, you're better than whole milk.